Once more the shadows of darkness fall over Desmond Hall. And once more the ancient ancestral home of the Desmond family seems to shudder in the night. For within its walls there is a new and threatening figure. The girl, Agatha, who knows Jean Paul Desmond has tried to kill and yet vows that the goodness of Jean Paul is what she admires and defends. Master, the girl will bring destruction upon us all. I have spoken with her, Axel. I know the danger. I know that at any minute she can call the authorities and say Jean Paul Desmond is the killer that she seeks. I know all that. But she has been alone, and she needs warmth, as we all do. Now trust her. Trust someone, Raxel. You must have more faith in the human spirit. You do not know what you are saying. I have lived for 300 years. I have seen people born and die. The world does not change. Each man seeks for himself what will do him the most good. That is the only story of life. If I believed that, I wouldn't want to go on living. I would want to solve my problems by ending them. Do not say that, Master. I have no faith in mankind. I have faith only in the Desmond family. It is you and the family that I serve, Master. And so therefore, whatever I do must be forgiven. You will do nothing, do you understand me? I must help this girl. Now, if I don't succeed, then life itself isn't worth living. As you wish, Master. Mr. Desmond, Jean-Paul, I have never in my life had such a wonderful evening. Promise me. Jean-Paul, you must promise me that you will never listen to a word against me. That no matter what anyone says, you will take care of me. That you owe me a debt of gratitude for the rest of your life. I cling to you, Jean-Paul, as a serpent over a flooded stream clings to the tree branch that supports him. Cousin. Oh, I hope I haven't invaded your privacy. Raxel, leave us. Leave us alone. Whatever the master says. Snap of the finger, a word of command, and everybody obeys. Oh, to be Jean Paul Desmond. Court, I'd like you to meet Miss Ag and I have already met. There's no need for introductories. We've already had our talk, haven't we? Yes. And you brought me tea. Such a beautiful evening. To be a seamstress, a poor seamstress, and have a gentleman kiss your hand. I thank you. Oh, nothing at all, Agatha. No more than you deserve for telling me about the secrets of my cousin's nocturnal adventures. He did save your life, didn't he? Yes. Yes, he did. You have the marks on your neck to prove it. The marks? The marks on your neck, dear Agatha. You have the most romantic guests, Jean Paul. The trouble is they talk too much. Caught. Is he going to spoil our evening? I couldn't bear that. He will spoil nothing. Court, when one kisses a lady's hand, then one does not insult her afterwards. Well, I don't follow the practices that one does. He is going to spoil our evening. I know it. Agatha is a guest here at Desmond Hall, and she shall be treated as such. Oh, I didn't realize the situation, Agatha. I didn't know. Mr. Desmond has done me the honor of inviting me to stay in his home. Are you surprised? Surprised? No. In fact, I'm very glad to see an attractive and very valuable visitor. Well, I'd give you the reasons, except I know the wrath of my cousin would be upon me. You see, we met earlier this morning, long before you had arrived back after what business occupied you last night. Agatha is a very honest and direct young lady. She told me things about you that made my thick Desmond blood run cold. And you know what I did? I protested. I told her never to talk about my relatives like that again. 
I protected you so that no one else in this family would hear the bizarre statements that she said about you. I have a right to keep Jean Paul's secrets. You see, I saw the scars on her neck. And she also told me that you had tried to kill her. There we are, my dear. You see how pleasant it can be when one has the right friends. This evening, Holly, I shall be your escort. I shall stay by your side all through the evening until the time comes. And you know when the time comes, don't you? I know the time. That's right, but now is not the time. So we will join the guest and smile, Holly. Smile. Holly, have you met Agatha? No, I haven't. Well, Agatha is here to meet some new friends. Shake her hand, Holly. Uh, but carefully. Ah, Court, you're here, then we are assured of a lovely evening. I'm very pleased to meet you, Holly. And I'm happy you're here with us. Well done. Where's Ada? Ada has a headache and will regretfully not join us for dinner. Laszlo, have you met the young lady? Yes, I greeted her this morning. And very cruelly. Jean-Paul, he greeted me very cruelly and I cannot forgive him for that. Well, the lady has courage all of her own. Agatha is my guest. And I would like to see to it that everyone at Desmond Hall treats her with civility and courtesy. As we do everyone. Oh, I think I'm going to get a headache like Mother does. I'm going to have to leave soon. Oh, don't do that. You were very nice to me this morning. As opposed to some people I could name. Agatha, tonight you will be the guest of honor. No one will say an offensive word. And you can tell us about your life and experiences. Oh, I'd like to do that. Yes, I'm sure she would like to do that. So, why don't we have dinner? I'm sure this is going to prove a very promising evening. Holly? Oh, not my arm, my dear. Your guardians. Your guardians. And Holly, nothing for you? No, I'm fine. Very fine. Of course she is. Smile for Jean-Paul. Ah! I saw something. Holly, what is it? Something moving on the stairs. There's nothing out here, nothing at all. I, I saw something. Holly, Holly, you're tired. Walk to your room, my child. Come along. No. Jean-Paul? Well, Jean-Paul will take you. But you should be asleep by now. I wanted to see his things. Was this his? When he was a boy. Was he ever a boy? I think we should talk about this some other time, Holly. Why don't you go to sleep now? But I need him now. Need him? 
I do see him, Jean-Paul, and talk to him sometimes. When? Tell me. Whenever he chooses. Not when I need him. Sometimes he's so kind to me. Sweet. And other times it's almost as if, as if he didn't like me. Holly, what does he say to you? He says that, that I must help him. And more often he helps me. The other day when I was lost in the fog, it was Philip who brought me home safely. Oh, I would have kept wandering on toward the cliffs, but... Oh, Jean-Paul, I'm so tired of living in fear. And it seems that Philip is the only one who reaches out to me, the only one who cares. Holly, I care. I never even touched him. He comes to me like a spirit. And sometimes it seems as if he takes my hand. Holly. Is this the Philip you see? Yes. Yes, that's Philip. May I have this? Of course. But what does he tell you? He used to say that you must find him, but now he says he's content as he is. Just talking to me. He's afraid of what will happen if he comes to me in some other form. Is he alive or dead? Does he tell you that? No, he doesn't tell me that. He says his powers are limited, that there are only certain things he can tell me. And that he can talk only to me. Does he say anything concerning me? Well, I said that, that you must find him. Well, where? He talks about, about the cold, the dark. I suppose that could mean death. Jean-Paul, I don't want him to be dead. I need him. Holly, you must speak to him. You must ask him to appear to you now. He won't. He only comes when I'm alone. But please try. Philip? Philip? Can you hear me? Jean-Paul is here with me. Jean-Paul, your brother. Philip, are you here? Philip, oh, he's angry. Philip, I didn't mean to make you angry. Oh, I don't want you to be angry. I want you to be happy. Oh, I don't care if you come to visit me. I don't care if you come to see me. Just as long as you're happy. you make that play for me? Oh, I wish... I wish we could be children together. Never worrying about growing up. Just... playing on the carousel. Riding on the carousel. Riding, riding, riding. While well, the music keeps on playing. Jean-Paul. Why are you looking at me like that? I think you've fallen in love, Holly, with the ghost of my brother. Where are you? Peter? Are you here? Have you lost something? Yes. No, it's not important. I should be in my room. Agatha, let's go sit by the fire in the drawing room. I... I don't want to. Is that the girl who talks about being lonely? Come along. Yeah. I was studying your face all through dinner. I saw a resemblance there. Which I see now. I don't resemble anyone. Oh, but you do, Agatha. Your parents. I don't have any parents. That's strange. For you do resemble Mr. and Mrs. Pruitt. Well, cat got your tongue? Mr. and Mrs. Pruitt were not nice people. 
But I know them quite well. I'm very fond of them. Then you don't know them very well. And you are their daughter. Yes. I left them a few years ago. I don't like the name. Why not? It's a perfectly good name, and Agatha Pruitt. No, no, it's evil. They were evil. Why do you say that? I can't tell you. Why are you asking me these questions? That's all over with. I, I left my parents' home. I don't see them anymore. Agatha, look at me. I know more than you think I do. I know that your parents are witches, aren't they? And you, even though you've disowned them, are you a witch yourself? No, I'm not. I'm not a witch. I don't even want to talk about such things. None of them do. Tell me, Agatha, and I want the truth. The truth now. Have you ever attended a witch's coven? Have you ever taken part in their rites? I won't tell you. You will tell me. Please. Please. Yes. Yes, when I was a child, they took me with them. I hated it. Hated all of it. That's why I left them. That's why I chose to live by myself. Poor little Agatha. Poor thing. And you have never practiced any of it since? No. I swear to you. Don't try to fool me, because you can't. Agatha, what would you do if I told Jean-Paul Desmond you were a witch? It isn't true. But if I told him? You mustn't. I've just only found a home. I'm happy here. And I want you to be happy. I believe you will, if you will listen to me and do as I tell you. What? What do you want me to do? For the moment, nothing. But the time will come, Agatha. Be certain. The time will soon come. Look into the fire, Agatha. Do you see what I see? A friend. A very close friend. In flames. Burning. So you know this room, Raxon? Yes, Master. From the time of your ancestors. In this room, my brother Philip used to dabble in necromancy and witchcraft. These bottles and all of this equipment give testimony to that fact. No one should experiment with the powers of evil. Do you think that explains his disappearance? I do not know, Master. Well, whatever has happened to him, he has reached Holly. I know that. Reached her for good or evil? And he has warned her against that woman, Mrs. Hatter. And he is correct. She is wicked. Oh, all that wicked? Perhaps a bad influence on Holly, but not an evil person. You ask questions, Master, and then you refuse to heed the answers. Braxel, is it possible that Philip, if he studied the occult, would have the power to appear as a spirit to someone, even though he were still alive? All things are possible. I don't want to think of my brother as dead. I don't want to think of him as a spirit from the beyond. Axel, what is it? What are you looking at? An opening. A hole just large enough for a, a serpent to crawl through. The shadow. The shadow of a crawling figure. As though this room has been visited. Axel, use your powers. Use your powers to contact my brother. I lost my powers. I lost them when we left Maljardin when my altar to the serpent god was destroyed and my idol smashed. But if a serpent has been here? The gods select the soul to whom they will speak. Raxel, try, try for my sake. I have been overpowered for so long by the powers of evil. I have been overshadowed by wickedness so that at any time it may strike out and try to control my destiny. There must be a force strong enough to combat this evil, strong enough somewhere, somehow. Where do we find it? I will try, Master. Alone. No, I want to stay with you. Alone. All right. I'll wait outside. Now call me if you need my help. Master, do not come unless I call you. No matter what happens, no matter what sounds or protests you hear, do not enter until I bid you. 
Will you honor that request? I will. No matter what happens to you or to me. No matter what happens. Gods of the serpent, gods of my ancestors, all power is yours for those who can reach you. Only you can disperse the spirits of good or evil. Only you can control or mislead the weak souls of man. I bring to you now my spirit. No offering, for I do not have an altar, but a soul which is strong and lasting as stone. If you have visited this place and uncoiled your powers here, appear to me. Come to the aid of those I serve. Appear to me. And if you are a serpent whom I can serve, I shall make this spot a temple. Yes, come to me. Come. I do not fear you. I do not fear you. 